Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, February 9th, 2024. If you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share to help our channel grow and for others to learn from what you're learning today. Thanks for joining us. So the first part of it is the weekly wrap up of the shows we did. Monday, we had the great Greg Manorino provided invaluable inv advice as far as the stock market and what he sees for interest rates and for what's going on with the war in the Middle East from his perspective. We greatly appreciate him and we look forward to having him on with us next month. Our returning guest, Bill Holter, was on with us Wednesday, also providing valuable advice and kind of dovetails and compliments what Greg was saying from his own vantage point. And then yesterday, which the show will be aired today live, uh, aired today officially, David Mahoney uh, had a bit of a time difference yesterday with Thailand, so we had to get that taken care of. But it was some great information. You might want to take some notes as all, with all the videos because we dropped some really important information on that as well. You know his work, so it speaks for itself. Uh, and today we're doing the wrap up. And then later on today, I have a chief health nutritionist and partner with Perium Products, something we're trying new because we do respect and understand that health is vital, literally, in this time. The wealth is one thing, but if you don't have the health, it doesn't mean much else. Uh, Ian Farrar will be joining us to give his perspective on the subject. Here's the key news items that we've itemized down for the week. As stated on Bill Holter's show, roughly 82,000 uh, job losses have been estimated uh, in the jobs report for January, and that number sets to uh, climb significantly, as you know, in the coming months. Um, IMF is reporting that Russia is poised to be the leading currency in 2024, as it was in 2022, based on their vast gold and other precious mineral and asset reserves, as well as their being in the forefront as one of the leaders for the BRICS alliance. Also set to have more layoffs, I believe, is uh, Warner, Warner Music is going to be laying off this month 10% of their workforce, and there's a Canadian um, uh, I believe it's an oil company there or a uh, the oil telco company is uh, laying off about 8%. So you're seeing this systemic throughout the world. Uh, more bank failures and closings. 154 branches set to close between uh, such banks as Wells Fargo, HSBC, Citigroup, and JP Morgan, just to name a few. So make sure that you have cash on hand, lower denominations, preferably when the shutdown does happen. China loses nearly 30% on their CSI 1000 index, which is the equivalent to our Dow here uh, in New York and Wall Street. So their economy is hurting badly. And Bill mentioned that in the show. It's a matter of which country blinks first, us or them. We'll talk more about Russia and China in a moment as it relates to Iraq. Tucker Carlson did his interview, as you all know, with President Putin. A lot of great information shared there, much more than most people realize. He also talked about the BRICS. So you can see everything is, is kind of proliferating to the middle. Serbia is among 30 to 40 countries to join the BRICS this year, including Zimbabwe, which we've covered numerous times. For those of you asking about the Zim bonds and dollars, that is one that we're watching closely. Their elections are set to go this year, August 23rd, but they could easily be preempted just like ours. Speaking of Zimbabwe, the corrupt proxy government hold holdover, Cyril, Cyril Rampahosa, announces this week that South African mining industry is undergoing major changes. This obviously sets the stage for their information and their international return on the gold-backed asset, along with other assets in the ground. More attacks on Iranian ships from the deep state from our side to agitate and escalate Iran towards a war. Uh, we are going to be watching for the stage to be set for them to attack Israel, Israel to do a counterattack on their secret nuclear power plants, which will be the perfect distraction to take everybody's eyes off of Iraq and onto the Middle East as a whole. Janine Planchard, the UN ambassador for Iraq's foreign relations, has, a for, has formally announced the end of her term sometime mid-May of this year. This is very significant as she has released the Chapter 7 obligations and sanctions off of Iraq. This was a key part of them returning to the international stage. She's also adamantly stated that she wants her legacy to be capped by being known that she was one of the key leaders in helping to reinstate Iraq's currency back onto the inter international stage prior to her stepping down. Now, there's some uh, interesting uh, intel that I've gotten. Uh, you remember, you'll recall a couple of weeks ago that we broke the news along with a few others that uh, the BRICS was usurping the G7 as the preeminent leader of the GDP holding in the world with 35% share. Uh, well, with 40 countries getting ready to join, we know that number is going to incrementally increase. Bill Holter believes it could be anywhere from 80 to 90% domination of the BRICS, and I don't think he's far off. Well, 
That same person they gave us on our team that we always talk about the information, he's one for one. He has now given me information of a high degree of probability of who President Trump's VP running mate will be. You might want to write this down. It was a surprise to me as well. He is predicting that Sarah Palin will be the one that is running alongside him. Uh, I thought it might be a woman. I was thinking it might be Christine Noem from South Dakota, given how constitutionally friendly they are. But obviously, they've absconded and hidden Sarah Palin for quite a while. Could this be the reason why? We'll find out. And this part is my speculation, but I think we're not too far off. On Sunday, Maria Bartiromo of Fox Business interviewed President Trump, as she has done several times before. In the context of that conversation, she asked him if he was going to bring back Fed Chair Jerome Powell. He said no, because he missed some key items, among other things. Very vague, but we kind of know the general outline of what that means. She asked him who she thought he would replace him with. He said he had two candidates in mind, which he was not going to disclose at this time. The first thought that came to me and my knowing was Judy Shelton. He has brought her out before at the end of his first term to do sort of a litmus test with Congress and the House and Senate to see how they would react to the return of the gold standard. She only lost by a few points in that try. Now with a completely cleaned out House and Senate and reset across the board, she should be the odds on favorite to win that position. She will bring back the gold standard and audit the Fed, which has been needed to be done for quite some time. Okay, so this part is just my personal op-ed here, but I'm still seeing questions that are repetitive and that we've already covered on other shows. Again, if you're new, I understand, but let's set the table here. This is a intermediate to an advanced channel for people who have been in this for five, seven, 10, 20, 30 years, like I've been. Uh, people who have experience in this, but more importantly than the time that they've put in, people that put in skin in the game. Some of you, I think, are under the impression that we're going to do it for you or that if you just all you had to do was buy the currency and that's it. No. If you bought a stock or a bond in the past, I'm sure you've tracked that religiously. Why is this any different? This has a much greater incalculable return on your investment as a faith-based blessing than anything else that you would ever buy stock or bond related, which was all artificial to begin with. We've discovered that. So some of you need to put in the time, and that means the currency of, of prayer, discernment, taking notes. If you have to go back to the videos and listen over and over and over again, I don't care about the clicks. What I care about is that you digest the information because we're not going to do this for you. We're going to help you to do it for yourself. I told you last week, we want a critically thinking uh, hungry, cogent audience for the truth about God and the truth about this blessing and how they correlate, and we're sticking to it. So we're not going to show up at the bank and, and do the exchange for you. Why would this be any different? You need to be investing, some of you, obviously not all of you, a great deal more time than you have, and don't just be spoon-fed. This is a very much a, a self-starting, self, um, I don't want to say self-involved, but a, a introspective journey where you have to do the work from the inside out and put forth the effort on all fronts. Buying the currencies, the bonds is just the first step. It's just like a marriage. Going to the altar and getting married is one thing, but then it's the relationship and the process after that that's the most important. This is no different. And just for the record, so we can clean this up, the dinar will be the first currency to go. They're not all going to go at the same time, regardless of what some of you have been told. That would be insider trading. And more importantly, God is going to let his people have time to get in this because many people don't know anything about this. Christians are coming into this late. Some of them will miss out on the dinar, dong, everything else. If you have dong, great. Use the dinar earnings to improve your position with that if God leads you and other things. Whatever that is, he shows you. If you don't have it, we strongly recommend that you do. We talked about that on the show with David Mahoney as he will be in Vietnam next week picking up some additional currency because he knows how valuable it truly is. And I would say dollar for dollar, pound for pound, the dong has much greater value than the dinar based on what you can get and how much silver is backing it. Many of you are big fans of silver like me. So if you're a fan of silver, you should definitely be a fan of the Vietnamese dong. Well, that does it for now. Thank you for listening. We appreciate your time. If anything breaks, we'll come out and do a uh, breaking news short. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Enjoy the videos this week. And uh, also we have next week, I should mention, we have Joe Williams, a fellow truther and friend. I've been on his past, uh, I've been on shows in the past. So please do look him up on YouTube, show him some love. I believe he's getting on Rumble as well. Uh, Eli Weber, Rabbi Eli, also a friend of mine out of New York. He, many of you know, his handle is Kabbalah Guru. Really good mensch, as they say in Hebrew. 
And then we have Wednesday, a very anointed Christian, uh, good friends with Denise Boland, Delora O'Brien. I've had touchstones with her over the years, so I kind of knew inevitably we would connect. I'll be on her show on Monday. So we're going to have three shows next week spaced out every other day so that you can process this information, and we encourage you to do so. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.